serve ramp up intercession for the Android users. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to turn to First Chronicles chapter 14. First Chronicles, the 14th chapter. And I'm going to give you some principles out of this, and then we'll make some declarations and see what see what happens. I need you to resolve while you're on the way there that war is not war for war's sake. That there is a mentality, particularly around spiritual warfare and deliverance circuits, that has us in a posture of warfare indefinitely. Wow. Almost as if that war has no real point. But there is a reward of warfare. And there is an objective of war. That's a part of what I'm going to help open up. I, uh, in my, uh, our church is founded upon deliverance and spiritual warfare. It's how we kind of grew into what we were doing. And one of the things that I've noticed very quickly, the Bible says that we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. And one of the devices of Satan is exhaustion. And one of the, uh, the, the devices of Satan beyond confusion and beyond distraction is exhaustion. And it's very easy to get fighting people tired yeah. and, and warring people exhausted. One of the things that I know about spiritual warfare is Satan's approach to many of, many of us is if I can't beat them, I'll outlast them. Yes, yes, yes. So there'll be uh, challenges in your endurance level and how long or, or your ability to complete a thing. So we're going to go through what some of the rewards of war are tonight. And it's going to really, really, really help you understand the next season. But in 1 Chronicles chapter 14, the woman of God kind of sang into it tonight. But I'm going to help you apply this to your life. 1 Chronicles chapter 14, verse 8 says, And when the Philistines heard that David was anointed king over all Israel, all the Philistines went up to seek David. And David heard of it. And went out against them. And the Philistines came and spread themselves in the valley of Raphim. And David inquired of God, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? And wilt thou deliver them into mine hand? And the Lord said unto him, Go up, for I will deliver them into thy hand. Verse 11. So they came up to Bel Perazim. If you're taking notes, that's what we're going to be breaking in tonight is that, that whole idea of God and the idea of that phrase, Belperazim. And David smote them there. Then David said, God hath broken in upon my enemies by mine hand like the breaking forth of waters. Therefore they called the name of that place Belperazim. And when they had left their gods there... David gave a commandment, and they were burned with fire. And the Philistines yet again, yet again, spread themselves abroad in the valley. Therefore, David inquired again of God, and God said unto him, Go not up after them, turn away from them, and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. And it shall be, when thou shalt hear a sound of going in the tops of the mulberry trees, then, that then thou shalt go out to battle, for God is gone forth before thee to smite the hosts of the Philistines. There, David therefore did as God commanded him, and they smote the hosts of the Philistines from Gibeon even to Gazar. And the fame of David went out into all the lands. And the Lord brought the fear of him upon all nations. We're going to work with what we learned uh, in verse 8 to be clear. But we're talking about breakthrough tonight. The Lord of the breakthrough. Bel Perizim. That word means the God that breaks through. And before I go through these scriptures, there's a couple of things that I want you to know. And the first one is that the Lord does not want your fighting, your conflict, your battle to be for naught. If you are in some form or up against some form of spiritual uh, conflict or some spiritual battle and you've lost sight of why the battle is there, you are already defeated. Any war without clear vision of the reward is a trap. God does not want us fighting blindly. And in that point, one of the major weapons in any level of spiritual warfare is going to be clarity. 
When it comes to spiritual warfare, you are only as effective as you are clear. If you are uncertain about what you're dealing with or why you're dealing with it, or if you don't have the ability to diagnose uh, or, or discern a certain spiritual attack or a spiritual resistance level, your approach or your engagement of it is going to be limiting. How many of you know Satan loves confusion? Yes. He loves discombobulation, mental disturbances, psychological battles, because it affects how much strength you can employ at a given target. And so I'm learning, especially where we're from in the inner city Pentecostal tradition, people love to fight, you know, we love to bind and wave our hands very aggressively and yell and scream. But after several years of that, often we are unclear about what we're fighting for. And that does matter in spiritual warfare. We don't just fight for fighting's sake. There is a reward that we are looking for. Ah. That reward is not always financial. It's not always material. But the most premier, and this is why our text is significant, the most premier reward of fighting is breakthrough. Yes, yes. Spiritual warfare is the beginning of spiritual breakthrough. There will not be breakthrough without conflict. Wow. You must be prepared for breakthrough. Breakthrough is what we have as our vision as we endure or undergo spiritual conflict. It's how it's born. So warfare then is the womb where all breakthrough occurs. If you are in need of breakthrough in any area, the song listed about 20, but if there is a need for breakthrough in any area, warfare is the instrument to break through. Now, I know that a lot of people in different camps will imply that all you need for breakthrough is a confession. But even confession is a form of spiritual yes, warfare. Right. The Bible says it's the power of life and death that is in the tongue. So the tongue has spiritual power. We call it vocal authority. Jesus said, if you say to this mountain, be thou removed. In other words, he is saying anything in created order has ears. When God ah. speaks or when something that has God in it speaks, everything listens. Yes. When Jesus walked up to a dead girl without auditory capacity, he spoke because it all has ears. These are different battle principles that are going to always lend you up to this principle. If you want breakthrough, you can't be afraid to fight. Wow. Now, when you are a person, a church, a people, an ethnicity, an economic class that's used to struggle, sometimes your fighting indefinitely is a safety guard. It's in, and there are people who in their struggle, they feel like their struggle brings them closer to God. Like right, their right. sufferings is almost like a lifeline to prove right. that they are in the right place. Wow. But how many of you know you can't be a conqueror okay with struggling? Right. And the Bible says that you are more than conquerors, which means that you have to do more than conquer. So these are different levels of warfare tactics and warfare techniques that we've got to understand. How many of you have ever approached a battle, whether it's uh, against a generational curse, whether it's against a word curse, whether it's against the power of witchcraft, a genetic design, and it almost felt like right in the heat of progress you became exhausted, just emotionally drained, just tired. We call it battle fatigue where you were doing okay until you got tired and then all of a sudden you didn't know who your allies were, who your enemies were, your ability to decipher who was on your team and who was not was no longer clear. You started to experience anxiety and panic over the future and what tomorrow would look like and then you would deal with sleep paralysis where you would go to bed and then wake up and not be able to breathe or something would arrest you to cause fear tactics to come before you so you would not be able to fight. Those tactics are very typical strategies of Satan to block you from breakthrough. Listen, because he knows that your sight of breakthrough, your clear vision of breakthrough is an energy source. And when you have an energy
energy source consistently feeding you, then it almost makes you undefeated. And it brings a, a realm of resilience in you because you're clear about what you're fighting for. We are not, like Paul said, batting against the air. We have targets. And lift your hands real quick. Let's pray into that. There is a realm of accuracy coming to you where you will no longer make empty hits and empty blows and empty swings, but you're going to move with a clarity, with a depth, with a boldness, with a precision, with an accuracy, with a swiftness, and you will hit your targets. We just break the assignment of discombobulation, of confusion, and we release and unlock the, the law of clarity in this place that you will know your enemy and you will know him well and you will not lose sight of the goal that's before you. Say, I receive that. So verse 8 of 1 Chronicles 14 opens up like this. And I want to get this clear, clearly. When the Philistines heard that David was anointed, first of all, if you want to be able to forecast your next war, you've got to know the anointing on your life. Wow, come on. The anointing on your life is always an indicator of the next battle wow, you will come face. On, come on. When God separates a church for a reason, separates a life for a reason, sanctifies a family, sanctifies a name for a season, it, it's basically projecting what your next battle would be. The anointing determines the reputation that you have in the spirit. Here is another spiritual warfare principle. There are a lot of people who approach spiritual warfare, but their reputation only has one dimension. They are only likable, applaudable, and reputable on the earth. But reputability on the earth does very little for you in spiritual warfare. Reputability, Facebook likes, Periscope followers, likes, posts, you know, being, being famous on Facebook is like being rich in Monopoly money. And you can't really do anything for you in the realm of the spirit. What you need is a 3D reputation. You've got to be each equally as popular in heaven and equally as popular in hell as you are in the earth. And there is a realm of reputability coming to us. Not just on the earth, but I believe there are things that are going to fear us and revere us in heavenly places. When the angel came to Daniel, he said, you are highly esteemed. And he was not talking about on the earth, but his prayer life made him respected in heaven. It made him regarded in hell. We must be popular in three realms. You'll get that tomorrow. So we, we, we should not just be just concerned about our reputability on the earth. We must also be concerned about the type of lives we live that get us respected in heaven. Say, I hear you. Amen. And respected on the earth. The Bible says when David was anointed, his adversary became mobilized. A common misconception in spiritual battle and spiritual warfare is when spiritual warfare comes is in response to something you did wrong. But often spiritual warfare is an affirmation that you are in the right wow, direction. Come on, come on. All spiritual battle is not punishment. It's not consequential. Sometimes it's not the, 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 the byproduct of disobedience. Many times it's triggered by the recent anointing on your life. Remember the Bible says that when Jesus took the apostles up to pray and they were praying and then down they came and there was a deadly storm. That realm of prayer scheduled the storm to come. So when, when you are approaching a time of battle, what the devil will do is unsettle your emotions to make you feel like, what did I do to deserve this? Or if it's not that, it's why does everything I have to do, I have to work so hard for. I look at so many hellish people who are in all kind of stuff, and it looks like the favor of God come over them. I do very small stuff, and it looks like I get all kind of stuff. How many of you know the enemy is aware of what God is anointing you to do? And many Time. These are powers that are intimidated by the oil that's come upon your life. But the Bible says that it was after David was anointed that the Philistines started to mobilize. Yeah. Now here is something very specific. David heard that there was a mobilization and he did not hide. There is a, and I want to say this respectfully, a Pentecostal charismatic passivity that is about to be destroyed in this next era. 
God is about to deal with people who want to speak in tongues in secret and not be confrontational when it comes to taking a stand, being direct. How many of you know the day of indirect church is done? Indirect God is done. Indirect preaching is done. There is a target of God. Listen, a speech, a language, a phrase, a way to say a thing that lands upon targets from the mouth of God. We prefer passivity because it gives us the right to not make a choice. Glory to God to not make a stance, to not be clear. Moses stood up and said, I want to know who is on the Lord's side. And I believe we need prophetic voices that are going to declare the Lord has a side. He has an opinion. He has a way he wants it done. He has a protocol. He has an order. And we can customize it based upon our culture. The Lord has a side. When David heard that the Philistines were coming for him, he presented himself. Oh, he presented himself. He presented himself. He basically said, oh, there's a fight coming. Let me prepare. He did not go and hide. He did not go and run. He presented himself. Why? He's a prophet. He knows that problems prophesy. I don't have the time to go there. But listen, when you have a problem, when it manifests in a child, in a family, your most difficult children probably are the greatest th threats to hell. Listen to me. Wow. Satan only attacks. If you want to know what God is about to do in your life, look at the thing that comes under attack annually. He only hits the stuff he's most afraid of. Up. So if it's your marriage, if it's your children, he's only going to sink his teeth into the stuff he's most fearful of. So problems prophesy. Prob if you've never received a word from a prophet, fine, look at your problems. They are all very direct indicators of the promise of God, the purpose of God, the plan of God for your life. Ah. Now listen, let's go through some tactical stuff here. Verse 9. And the Philistines came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. Now we're going to do some spiritual warfare stuff. The assignment that I believe we're supposed to deal with tonight are barriers and barricades. Wow. There are barriers. Now I'm not talking about parameters. Because God is a God of parameters. He will give you parameters. Operate in this way. Operate in that way. These are your limits. These are your boundaries. He told Joshua from here to there. You know, sometimes people act like they are anointed unlimitless. And it, no, you are not that anointed. There's going to be some places where you are not as effective. There's going to be some issues you should stay away from preaching. You know, you do have parameters. God is a God of parameters. That's why he gave you a gender and a name and a specific. He is very specific with how he wants things done. Now, but a parameter is not a prison. It's a limit for protective purpose, for preservation's sake. But the strategy of the Philistines here was to encircle and spread out around David to cause him to be overwhelmed with the consistency of their circle around him. A spread out enemy. It's almost like going through a season of warfare and you are under attack in multiple areas. For most of us, attack in one area would be fine. But if it's your money and your body and your kids and your marriage and your job and your degree and then you got this other thing coming at you on Facebook, it's just overwhelming. It's a barricade. It's a demonic engagement. And it's so, why? They want you to be intimidated before the fight starts. Yeah. The Philistines were smart. We've heard about David. If we're going to catch him, we've got to put a circle around him. There are demonic barriers that I believe the Spirit of God is going to break tonight. I, and, and listen, many of them are economic. Some of them are racial. Some of them are gender-based. I begin to hear the sound of red tape in worship. Many of you have deals and business issues and real estate things that are being cut by the Spirit of God because it's a barrier, it's a barricade, something that's stopping you from crossing over. That's a massive issue right now. Many of our promises are trapped in the second heaven because we don't have barrier-breaking technique, barrier-breaking prayers, barrier-breaking mentalities, even, listen, barrier-breaking partnerships. Many of your next breakthrough is in your next arrival.
arrangement. The body of Christ is foolish. A lot of the people they compete with, they should be partnering with. There is a realm of allegiance and a realm of alliance and a realm of collaboration being birthed in the body of Christ. Some of your realms of favor will be opened up by who you partner with. That's also a spiritual warfare technique. But they spread themselves out in a barrier, in a barricade. Okay, now listen, verse 10. When he noticed that there was a barrier around him, let me keep you here, in this specific tax bracket, in this specific city. I don't want your influence going beyond here. In this specific season, let's keep you down here. I don't have to kill you. I just got to restrict you. Is there anybody claustrophobic in here? Well, when things begin to close in on you and you're like, I know there's more to God than this. There's more to me than this. There's more to purpose than this. There's more to power than this. There's more to demonstration from this. In the name of Jesus, God is breaking barriers tonight. Barriers are breaking. Barriers are breaking. I can hear the sound and the siren of walls in the spirit that's preventing you from going to your next place. What did David do? Verse 10. I want to give you these steps. When David noticed that there was a barrier, he did not complain. He did not move in the flesh. He inquired of God. Some of us are without the right instructions because we don't have an inquiring heart. See, it's impossible to be effective in warfare if you are not as prophetic as you need to be. And it's not a matter of mysticism or random spontaneous visitation. Sometimes in warfare, you must position your heart to ask God the right questions. Come on. And when you can seek your way into information, it will give you the strategy on what to do next. I know many people that have been taken out in spiritual warfare because of wrong information. You can't make right movement on wrong information. Oh, that's heavy there. There is a need for inquiring hearts in warfare. There's a time where before you respond or react, you've got to bow and ask God, what are you doing? Is this the pace for me? Uh, there's a lot of us who know the red, the green lights of God, but we don't know his yellow lights. How many of you know there's a caution of the Holy Spirit? He'll let you know, proceed with caution. And then there are stops of God where you may be going into a deal or going into a season and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit is like, you started driving a little faster than me and our hearts move faster faster than our minds. We need to be sensitive to what God says when we inquire. You must be prophetic if you're going to fight. Yeah, yeah. Now I want to move on for that, but I just believe God is saying crack that open a bit more. It's 2017. There is no way in the world you should be a part of anything that's convincing you that God doesn't talk. Right. <laughs> Ever. 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 It is too late in the game to be in a non or anti-prophetic church. God is not a multiple choice God. He has an opinion about everything in your life. From where you go, to who you date, to what you study. He has a thought on it. And to suggest otherwise is to suggest that he's careless. Not invested. Not involved. Every detail of your life is on the mind of God. You've got to be prophetic. David and part of God saying, shall I go up? Listen, is this my war? I'm going to tell you something. The Holy Spirit has been ministering to me this year in my life this. He told me, son, wear the burdens I gave you. Now, you don't understand how powerful that is. When you are a prophetic person... You are almost synthesized to weights and burdens and needs. You can go into any city and know a need. But just because you can sense the need does not mean you're the one anointed to do it. And I believe Satan is wearing people out because they see a need on this corner or a need in this city. And now you're over exhausting your resources, anointing yourself because of what you saw. How do you know you just need to pray or believe God to raise somebody up or, 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 or invest in it? Just because you notice the need it's not the same as you being the one to feel it. 
but a lot of you are losing years in the wrong seed city, in the wrong region. You're acting like your anointing works everywhere. How many of you know that the Bible says even, there were even some places Jesus would not do some miracles? Not because of the anointing on him, but the culture on the people. Do not allow the wrong region to wear you out. Now that must have been an ouch. Some people are like, I'm going to bring the revival. Sir, it's only one of you. And you are up against a 1,000 year old culture. If they don't respond to what you say, you pack you and your family up, Noah, and you hit the boat and you go where they receive. How do you know it's the Lord's plan for you to be received? I just buy that a religious thing on you that's got you out there by yourself like Gilligan's Island, pioneering, and nobody's listening. You're yelling down by us trying to be heard. There is a people for you, and there is a place for you, and there is an area where the anointing on your life will be received. trying to turn the Titanic in one year. <laughs> they came to Valparaiso. Can I give you a word from the Lord? You must find your location. My God. You've got to know the area that God is giving you breakthrough at. It will not be every place. I know businesses that won't flourish in certain cities and will bloom in others. Church is the same thing. There is an anointing on the place God called you to be in. He went to Belperazim and the Bible says David smote them there. It seems like an effortless victory, right? Then David said, God hath broken in upon my enemies by my hand like the breaking forth of waters. Therefore they call the name of that place Belperazim or the God that breaks through. Now, verse 12 says that when they had left their gods there, David gave a commandment. Here's what happens. The term breakthrough by definition means this. A sudden release of information that moves you past the barrier. A sudden release. Breakthrough is not a feeling. It's not a release. Ooh, no. Breakthrough is a difference, a difference in information that enables you to move beyond a barrier. For example, when there is a release of new medical technology in cancer or anything like that, what do they call it? Scientific breakthroughs. These are informational discoveries that enable you to move beyond the barrier. Can I give you a word? Everything you need is behind what you don't know. Wow, come on. My Lord. So the key to getting what you need is knowing what someone does not. Anyone that breaks any record the Guinness Book of World Records, any, any statistic barrier, they get to that realm by knowing easily what others try hard to figure out. They crack codes. So it's important for the spirit of revelation to be active in your life. It's the only way you will break barriers and everything you need. From, now listen, I know some of you may feel really weird about this, but, and, and, and I, maybe God does too, which is why he ain't answered me. Every time I see that lotto number get up to like 47 something num on, million, I'm praying in tongues like, Lord, you give me names and numbers and addresses, surely you can give me that. I will pay my tithes. Now listen, condemn me if you want. I'm just telling you right now. The wealth of the wicked is laid up. I pray in tongues hard. I am your prophet, your man servant. Please reveal these mega ball numbers to me. I will help the sick. I'll build orphanages in Africa. I promise you. Money is with all things. Jesus. Don't touch and agree with me. I know that's why I think it. I'll give all y'all some money. <laughs> 43 million? I go in grief every time I see a non spirit filled person cashing that stuff in. I'm like, my God. And we selling catfish dinners and, and, and washing cars. Oh my God. It's right in the lottery. We can solve 10 decades of problems right here. I'm about to say breakthrough. What you are in need of is a different level of information. It's not just divine connections and a different credit score. You need to know something. There's a realm of darkness that must be broken by information, perspective, insight that will give you the grace to cross a barrier or a boundary. Now, 
Verse 12 is very important for you because it shows David's response to breakthrough was that he went after idolatry. Why is that significant? Because when people become carriers of breakthrough, it's very easy for them to think they've got it in their own strength. I believe David was showing that no, even though I'm getting this breakthrough, I'm going to commit this win to the Lord. You're not going to leave idolatry around here. See, the house of God is not supposed to be your personal brand. This is not about my thing or your thing or us taking over the world or any of that crap. This is about the man Jesus Christ. This is about the kingdom of God. How many of you know when God blesses you, you ought to burn an idol. When God gives you favor, you ought to tear down an idol. Press an altar. Make sure that it's clear that I've not done this by my hand, by my effort, but it's by the grace, the power, the wisdom, the authority of Almighty God. There are many men that have fallen because of the worship of their own agenda, their own vision, their own goals, their own strategy. They wanted to raise up unto themselves an altar like a Kmart or a Walmart, but I believe God is looking for a people that won't use breakthrough unto themselves, but will get breakthrough and then throw a demon over, throw an altar over, throw a, 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 a monument of hell down. Now I'm giving you some very clear keys on the right response to breakthrough. The wrong response to breakthrough is to go on and say, thank you, Jesus. The right response is to find the residue of idolatry. Why? Because in order to maintain Breakthrough, the enemies of God can't be there. Jesus. The common area that this happens with in most local churches is romantic relationships. They'll try to do, they'll, they'll bring God a pagan, a heathen, and bring him to the altar like the ring is going to deal with lust. How I many you know demons don't respond to wedding bands? If you full of lust, oh, it's, this is getting ugly. Okay. I'm not, I'm not the devil's not sitting in there like, oh man, he's got a wedding band now. I gotta keep the covenant. No, no, no. You full of covenant breaking demons. You got lust, pornography, all kind of occult sex in your background. You got the names of ex-lovers all plastered over you. You bring them to the altar and think that's gonna fix that stuff. No, you need deliverance, brother. You need years of deliverance. You got stuff in you that used to visit me when I was two years old. You need that stuff cast out of you. You cannot do God's stuff the devil's way. Stop bringing him unbelievers and People feel with darkness and coming to the altar to ask God to fix your rebellion. Huh? My suspicion is several of you are in here. You know how many women of God I've had to rebuke for going outside of the kingdom in their desperation to find a Muslim or to find a Hebrew Israelite and mentor him and lead him to the Lord. Look at this witchcraft. You don't want to go in there controlling him. I said, aren't you right? You don't go in there controlling that man to get him saved for the sake of your sexual life? You got a man kit. Build a husband. Jesus. He is coming for idolatry in the house of God. The greatest sin in America is not abortion. It's not homosexuality. The greatest sin in America is idolatry. And until America bows her knee, we cannot see revival. We must turn these altars over. So, hallelujah. I believe God is looking for people that's not afraid to turn tables altars of idolatry. There's idolatry. I'm out here. I'm out. There's idolatry in most denominations in the world. We worship our own little belief system and then slap Jesus on it and make him the mascot of our own bias. This is why we still don't believe in women preachers and still condemning people who don't believe in Acts 2.38. And when you're baptized in Jesus' name or the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, you religious demon, you. I believe that old brainwashing that's come out of hell that's got you tapping out of In order, listen, 
Satan is afraid of breakthrough. So immediately after you've seen breakthrough, if you don't start confronting idolatry, now listen, here is one of the things. Samuel said that, that stubbornness is idolatry. Why? Because it's the worship of your own opinion. The worship of your view on a thing. I'm right and nobody else is. You know, when you tell people I'm stubborn, it's, it's not really a cheap thing to own. Why? Because God doesn't use the unflexible. He doesn't get in the way of trying to speak to people who want their will over his. If you're not broken, there's not very much God can do with you. That stubbornness may affect your breakthrough. How many of you have seen a breakthrough in one area and just as soon as it came and left, it's probably because you didn't immediately, I feel like I'm supposed to talk about altars. You didn't immediately erect an altar unto the Lord to say that this was the God that gave me this. In every area in the Bible where fire fell, it was because there was a very clear altar and the name of the God was there. When, I saw, when you see an altar in a region, the name of the deity was on the altar to signify that this is the guy holding this territory down. This is the guy that's responsible for the birthright, responsible for the harvest, responsible for the weather. Now, if I look in your life and there are no altars anywhere, don't, we don't know who blessed your children, who blessed your marriages. Many of us have not. The last time you brought your spouse to the altar was the wedding. Y'all ain't praying together. You not dedicated the children together. Y'all don't come together for times of worship and then you want to, you know, shoot fly don't bother me when the devil comes in. If it, if it starts at the altar, it's got to stay at the altar. If it got free at the end, now listen, I'm an altar baby. I'm very old school. I would never go to a church that restricted altar activity. How I many know there are some things that can only happen at the altar? And if you want fire there, you must have a place to die, a place to be sacrificed, a place to be pierced, a place to allow the answers of God, the edicts of God, the contract of God to be enforced in a land. And that happens at the altar. The Bible says that David smote them there And David burned them Verse 13 After he burned them The Philistines came back In breakthrough processes You must be prepared for the rematch yeah, wow. There's an entire teaching that I do Called preparing for the rematch When Satan came to Jesus in the valley There was a persistence And endurance a rematch. Many of us, even in delivered churches, we are amazing with teaching people you need to be delivered. This is a curse. That's a bondage. That's a thing. We're not really good with teaching people rematch yeah, tactics. Yeah, good. There's a lot of people, especially with the area of sexual sin. Yeah. One of Satan's strategies with them is to keep them bound because they still feel the feelings. Yeah, come on, preach. The demon is gone. The power of hell is broken. But then you've got years of images and, and thoughts that disturb you and, and come back. And so often, that's the glue that brings many people back under the bondage. And here's why. We have not done a good job with teaching people what temptation does. Huh. We, we, we act as if temptation belongs to the wicked. But let me ask you something. Why would Satan tempt his own property? See, temptation is not a sign that you belong to the devil. It's a sign that he's afraid of losing you. So he is, and, and if that were not the case, then why would Jesus be tempted? See, we, we teach people, get out, stay out of sin, but you don't know what to do with temptation. And unfortunately, say unfortunately, temptation is not something you can bind. I bind you! It's not going anywhere. Temptation will come to test your decisions. Deliver us from evil, but lead us not into temptation. into temptation. Temptation is a natural part of life. And there's some things you'll experience in your flesh that won't go until you tell it no. Yeah, that's right. Mm. See, you've got to learn to become stronger than the strong man. Yeah. And it will be very easy for God to say, Poof, go away. No, there's some things you've got to look in the face, even if your flesh wants it, and say, I don't, I can't do that. As a matter of discipline. Now listen, if we teach deliverance and we do not teach discipline, we are setting people. 
people up for failure. You know one of the reasons why radical Muslim terrorists will get in the building and blow everybody else up and say praise be to Allah and go on to wherever they're going is because they attack the law of discipline. It doesn't matter where they are, three times a day, they want to bow their face and they're going to pray. Most Christians struggle with fasting. We don't like to turn our plate over. Now listen, they are the sons of Ishmael, which means that they still tap spiritual principles that were born for us. And one of them is the power of fasting. We spend time binding cancer and binding diabetes when we should be binding McDonald's. And we should be binding, y'all don't like that. We should be binding Wendy's. We should not just be binding hot blood pressure. We need to be binding pudding and gravy and cupcakes and hog balls. And yeah, we need to be binding that so we can get disciplined. <laughs> you would not need healing if you would have the right diet. Ay, 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 ay. How many of you know your lack of discipline is a doorway for the devil? Your lack of discipline is an opportunity for Satan to step into your life. It may not be a generational curse. It may be an undisciplined area in you. I know that's hard. But as soon as you grieve, first thing you go to is some chocolate ice cream. It's idolatry. <laughs> they came back let me give you the bible for this I'm hurrying up Jesus says it this way when an unclean spirit goeth out of a man he goes through seeking through dry places finding rest and finding none he says now listen to the statement of this unclean spirit I will go back to my house what is he referring to your life See, there are spirits that find your life as its personal real estate. Wow. I will go back to my house from whence I came. What is that? A rematch. Question. Did the demon leave? Yes, it just came back. See, we're in such expectation of when it leaves that we have no clue what to do when it comes back. I will go back to my Jesus. house from whence I came and take it. Seven more spirits, more wicked than himself. That's demonic gang banging. How many of you know gang banging and, 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 and demonic networking was not born on the earth? Before human beings became intelligent enough to know they could work together, there were demonic criminals and conspirators in heavenly places that decided to work together to break down the human race. If you don't believe me, look at the first thing Lucifer did when he fell. He developed a team. The Bible said one third Johnson family, but how many of you know just to get one may not be enough? You got some other minor supporting ones, and what I'm learning is the stronger devils will kick the midget ones out and make a scene and cough up so you can think that it's gone. And right when you get vulnerable, and right when you get weak, the strong man is going to reveal itself. There are times, even when you are under strong preaching, but there's a guardian spirit and it's standing in the way of freedom and breakthrough, and you get offended, but it might not be you that's offended. It Receive deliverance and receive breakthrough. But I believe God is setting you up for unprecedented breakthroughs. And many of you are going to be the recipients of breakthroughs that your father didn't receive, your grandfather didn't receive. I see multi generational deliverances being run forth in the room. Say, I receive it. generational blessings. We do a lot of preaching on generational curses, but nobody wants to talk about inheritance. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. I just sense heritage being born in this world. One of the things that's released in spiritual warfare are the spoils. If your father and his father and his father went to death without receiving the promise of God, how many of you know you are the beneficiary? Come on, let your hands I'm the beneficiary. I want everything to the great one out. I am the next in line. I believe that God is unlocking generational blessings around the earth. Shout hallelujah. Now that's a breakthrough. I said now that's a breakthrough. It's multi-generational. 
If you are the last man standing, then you become the candidate for multi. I am the God of Abram. I am the God of Isaac. I am the God of Jacob. I can give you at least three generations of favor and blessing and breakthrough and deliverance and promise. When they regained and came for the rematch, David asked God again. What do you want me to do? Yeah. See, he didn't, he didn't rely on the wisdom from the last inquiry. There was a new attack, so there was a need for new instructions. You, you can't develop an updated battle plan from expired revelation. David was a smart man. Psalms 27 shows us that he knows the power of inquiring of the Lord. There's one thing that I desire the Lord, and that will I seek after that I would dwell in his temple and inquire. What does that mean? To ask the right questions. That quiet time before God will give you the battle plan for the breakthrough. And every season requires a new strategy. I wish I could get on every major television network in America and tell these preachers that. A part of our problem is not the wrong message, it's the wrong strategy. New seasons require new strategies. You can't approach a 2017 demon with a 1962 strategy. I've been telling black people all year, if y'all don't put these picket signs down and stop marching, it's not, it didn't help Dr. King. That's the same, y'all don't like that do you, boy. It's the same strategy. We've got to come back to the table and figure out what are we supposed to do. I know the devil is not that level. We all look. The devil is not afraid of them sticks or them signs. How many of you know if we go march, we ought to at least be able to bind? And we ought to at least be. You know the problem is a lot of people marching are powerless. Y'all don't even believe in demons. Principality. You got markers on poster boards and you beat principalities and powers with sticks and marches. But the Bible said we have got the keys of the kingdom. You can't beat them with a marker. You got to beat them with the keys. And whatever you find her, I want y'all to sing up it. It's pounded. racial issue if we have more spiritual warfare people on the front line. Everybody that's representing us don't have the Holy Ghost. No, man, no. They don't come on. They don't, they don't speak with tongues. They are ecumenical. That means that they think Jesus needs some help from Buddha. He needs some help from Mary. We're confusing the whole nation. But it's not going to be until somebody stands up and says, Hi, my name is Matthew Stevenson and I hate the devil. And a part of what racism is, is witchcraft. That's what we need on CNN. That's what we need on Fox News. <laughs> a new strategy. A new strategy. Now, David could have very easily did what he just did. But how many of you know what you did for the last victory may not work for the next one? You need a fresh strategy. So David changed his strategy. And he got the victory again. Now look at this. He called the name of that place Bel Perazim. God, there's a whole, somebody needs to rebrand the identity of God in America because we only interact with him like that bloody little lamb. Yeah. 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 How many of you know our God is a fighting God? Yeah. I don't have the time to teach, but there's a whole species of angels that are fighting angels. Yeah. Well, one of the Bible say he threw the, 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 the uh, he threw Egyptians into a panic and broke their brakes down when they pursued it. There are tactics, fighting tactics. We know nothing about the military side of God. Go to Micah chapter 2. I'm going to end on this note. The Bible says after David got the breakthrough, fame came. Fame came. And it wasn't because he was a celebrity. But fame came. He developed a reputation for being a person that stepped outside of barriers. He was not held back by the attempts of stuff. There's a realm of fame that I believe is prophetic. But it doesn't come by deception and it doesn't come by pride and vainglory. It comes by power. I mean, when you move in the power of God, God will make sure you're known for certain things. And he will allow that fame to become currency. But you can use it to acquire things. 
A good name is to be desired. Far above ruby. How do you know God will allow you to develop a good name so you can buy stuff? And I'm not talking about in a debt sense. Now I'm talking about access to people. The Lord spoke to me last year. He said, son, I'm going to bless you to the degree that you will speak to people who would ignore you if they thought you were a peasant. I'm giving you access to secret rooms. I'm giving you access to be sought out by royalty and people that can't publicly acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm not blessing you because you've always obeyed me. I'm blessing you because of who I called you to. Who receives that? How many God's going to favor? God's going to favor some of you. Not because you did everything right. But there is an audience out there. The elite God is trying to reach. The secret families and evil people in industry that have power to favor you and open up doors for the kingdom. Micah chapter 2 verse 13. Say breakthrough. breakthrough. Micah chapter 2 verse 13. This is how the prophet Micah identified God. The breaker. Yes. The breaker. It's come up before them. Remember the Bible says that David's claim in verse Chronicles 14 was that the Lord went before him. Listen to me. Unless the Lord makes the way, don't you try to go. Yeah. Prophetic people are really guilty of getting ahead of God. Wow. Just because they saw it coming or they sensed it, they thought that that was the same thing as moving into it. But we must be careful of presumption in this hour. My prayer daily is, Lord, don't ever let me get ahead of you. I want to be in your timing, in your pace, in your rhythm. You know, even in relationships, sometimes when you try to be with the right person at the wrong time, is the equivalent of the wrong person. Timing is everything. Timing is everything. And the Bible says the breaker has come up, and a part of what he does is he goes before them. How do we break that down pragmatically? Every opportunity, decision, open door needs to have God at the top. We can be very guilty of a crisis-centered prayer life. Where we cry out to God after we've acted and then we need him to save. But you've got to put him at the top. You've got to be willing to put him at the head of this decision. At the head of this move. At the head of this opportunity. The breaker has come up before them and has broken up and passed through the gates. And are gone out by it. And their king shall pass before them and the Lord on the head of them. When you master breakthrough strategy... A part of what happens to you is gates swing open. Places of access, of entry point. Places of opportunity. Places where uh, there are administrative powers that make decisions that they are turned. Now, you may be the Brown family, the Smith family, the, the Johnsons, whatever. I believe there are whole demonic strategies for entire bloodlines. I believe there are schemes, cons conspiracies. For example... Cancer is hereditary because it's demonic. Yes, yes, yes. And if you don't believe it is demonic, you tell me where it was in the 60s. Where was it? That thing just popped open and just going with a ferocity. I mean, it's just everywhere. Cancer up to everything. And, and then it's inherited. You know, your aunt will have it and you have it. A part of you what they ask in medical assessments, who in your family has had this? Because there's a such thing, there are demonic stalkers. The people that were really, and you were not the first target. Your grandfather was. And after they got there, now they got to come after their descendants. Why? Sons are one of the most powerful warfare tactics. Just before Joshua went into Jericho, what happened? He circumcised his sons. Why? He understood that if Satan can't get me, he's going to get my seed. Mm. Now, this is also why it's important that we model righteousness in front of our seed, spiritually and naturally, because when the adults play, the children pay. You've got to be, oh, why is this quiet? You've got to be very careful of what you exhibit in front of your children. You've got to be very cautious about what you model in front of them, what you allow them to be exposed to. There is a very profound, I've been running into it as I travel, a vagabond spirit. Yeah. Where people are roaming house to house, city to city, spiritual father to spiritual father. And if you trace it, it's a behavior they picked up very early on. Where they're always in different schools, always in different things. You know, ballet, chilling, basketball, blah, blah, blah. So, so they were programmed to despise stability. 
How many you know that's what happened with Cain? The Bible said he was marked and he became a vagabond, like a tumbleweed. He never felt at home no matter what he had. It's a curse. Amen. It's a curse. We've got to be very cautious about protecting our posterity by exemplifying righteousness in front of them and not exposing them to stuff. This is why at our church, we got a church full of everything. I mean, you may you know, you may find all kind of stuff in there, and rightfully so. But here's a part of the, the beauty of our model: mercy and judgment. Generally speaking, you have one or the other. But when a deliverance ministry has no acceptance, it's not a deliverance ministry. Acceptance is the beginning of deliverance. Wow. How many of you know in the Pentecostal tradition, we try to gut fish we ain't caught yet? It's quiet today. You get to scanning and gutting this stuff and they barely on the hook. In my church when we were younger, there was a welcome sign that said no. That was how you got welcome. It just said no at the door. And then the name of the church. So when people got to like, know what? Whatever you want to do. You know the bowling, know the skirts, know the women, know the nothing. Just no. Know the laughing, know the joking, know the nothing. Just no. That's all you need to know. Now come in and give me worship. Way to go. And that's why nobody stays saved. Everybody backslid after the first month because they're like, you know what? This is boring. I, I just can't do this anymore. <laughs> So there must be mercy and judgment, fire and water. Yeah. And our inability to find a point of balance yeah. is very evident in spiritual warfare circles. I believe that what allows us the right to move in deliverance is that we accept them first. Yeah. We don't accept them after they're free. Their acceptance is not conditional on their obedience. Now, why is that difficult for you? Because you think acceptance and agreement is synonymous, and it's not. I can accept the person and be in disagreement with who they are or what they're doing. My acceptance is not saying you have my support. My acceptance is I love you and God loves you. Now can we talk about some of these little critters on your shoulders? <laughs> oh come on, let's now we, we like the easy devils hurt. I've been hurt, you know. Now I'm unforgiven. We're like dealing with Jezebel, witchcraft, bohemian, the occult, white magic, dark magic, necromancy. We don't want to get into all this stuff. We like the stuff like unforgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> people come to our altar like, I got hurt. I'm like, okay, just let me pray for you. Because I, I see some other uh, guys in there too. Hurt got some family members that we need to deal with. <laughs> Amen. I mean, no, how many of you know a person, hurt can grow into murder? Yeah. If you don't believe me, watch Snap. <laughs> them sisters be killing them brothers, and it was born by her. Look, dainty women coming in there with knives. Ah, that's a spirit. That rage wasn't in star rage. It partnered with her. So you have to listen. I'm being, I'm funny, but I'm serious. You got to be careful how you manage hurt feelings. When you let hurt ferment over years, it'll turn into rage. It'll turn into bitterness. If you're a woman, it'll turn into lesbianism. You be so hurt over men, you think that can nobody love you like a woman. All the root of that stuff is hurt. Deep hurt. Come on. Deep hurt. You got to allow this stuff to come out of you. <laughs> Most perversions start as hurt. Begins as abandonment. Amen. Oh my. So those, those are the breakthrough principles. Now, so breakthrough is the reward of spiritual warfare. I, what I believe the Lord is doing in this environment, I'll give a couple of prophetic words and then we're going to give a massive offering. What I believe the Lord is doing is I believe that he is setting us up for blessings with interest. And here's what he said to me before I left the hotel room. He's given us breakthrough for the forfeited favor. Favor that was forfeited by people before us. And not just in a natural sense. Satan is after the inheritance of the saints. The inheritance. If you never know pain, you, you don't know a pain like the pain of nobody stored anything for me. That is a deep. Anybody that has the ability, the, the desire to be a son or a daughter will run into that grief one moment where they realize nobody was careful enough to lay up something for me. That is a very deep pain. When you realize that nobody, and you know America is so jacked up, man. The way we start kids off is in debt. 18 years old, good luck. I'm going to sign your life over to Sally Mae. Now, we don't even know where she at these days. 
<laughs> she run for her life. <laughs> First thing I'm gonna do when I get to heaven is punch Sally Mae. Where is she? <laughs> Lady, you ruined my life. Jesus. I mean, you delivered from student loan debt. My God. It's a monster. But I believe something is about to happen where God is going to supernaturally create inheritances. God told me, I want you to prepare portions for those that had nothing saved for them. If you are here and nobody's ever worked to build a, an inheritance for you, spiritually or naturally, everything you've had to do is create your own way. Do not fret. God, through the spirit of adoption, I can sense it in this room, is reconnecting dropped people to stories that's going to bless and bring promotion and bring opportunity. How many of you believe that? Okay. So let me promise out a little bit. Okay, when I walked in, um, I sensed that there were 15 people here that struggle with depression, and most of it was on the clinical scale. If you've had de depression really bad to the point of, uh, of, of almost medication, stand up on your feet really quickly and move quickly while the anointing is here. Because I want to get, don't be embarrassed either. There's about 15 of you here. I can sense it. Most of it is chemical. And uh, just stay right, right, right where you are. Lift your hands. Come on, all over the room. Come on, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. For, for most of you, or many of you, it's, it actually comes because of molestation. I sense a very profound uh, bondage uh, uh, of, of molestation, uh, maybe even through an incest. Just stand up really quickly. Now, we're going to go through a couple of waves of this, and then we're going to move. If you are around somebody um, that, that is standing up from, from this, um, okay, that one of you are, you are a woman of God that uh, uh, you experienced divorce from a series of multiple affairs from your husband, uh, uh, and uh, the, the depression in you has turned into rage. God's going to heal you tonight. Just lift your hands all over the room. Come on. Now, if you're next to one of these people, will you do me a favor and, and, and respectfully lay your hands on them? I need prayer teams. Come on. Respectfully lay your hands on them. If you're standing around somebody uh, that's standing up, I want to just create prayer teams around them. Let's do this quickly because I have a lot to do. Come on. Now, we're just going to speak to this issue of depression. Oh, come on, there's a man of God. You're embarrassed about this. This, um, I, I see there's a man, uh, and you have a very strong, uh, 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 this is a liquor addiction. It's, it's secret. You go to a specific brand of whiskey every night to cope with, uh, your father was very abusive. Stand up. God wants to heal you right now. Now, if you're around these people, just begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we call on the spirit of healing. The breaker is come up right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And we just decree over them that every assignment on their sanity, every assignment on their mind, their will, their emotions, in Jesus' name. We prophesy to their chemical and their genetic makeup, be settled right now. The peace of God in their mind, the peace of God, hell, in their memory, come on, there you go, the peace of God right now. I command their memory banks to be emptied out of trauma, of terror, of death, of threats in the name of Jesus Christ. And we release standards, come on, standards, standards in the mind, in the mind. When the enemy comes in like a Love. The Spirit of the Lord God lifts a standard. We declare a standard in your mind right now. There it goes. In the name of Jesus, a standard. We come against the witchcraft curse in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's making you deal with multiple thoughts, multiple personalities. We break your power now and we release the fire of the word of the Lord to settle your mind. Jesus, regulate the mind, counsel the mind, settle the mind. And we decree today and in we curse the spirit of depression. Even now, we command it. Be We're going to wait for the river just a little while longer. Arigi bada bata resta. Men tor di kiti fan bene tome ne bole mani bata. Rega tar tar bos tahara mani diatre. Rega tar tor des. Me tole van bor tis de mene botona. Ele baba na patwa. Ele kondo hava per de astena. Se ne patri di di fish maharato. Re. Come on. We break your power. Every controlling power. Every ruling spirit. Illegal grief. In the name of Jesus. Come on, we break your hold in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, just a little out of the fire. 
that you've walked into, uh, particularly with the disappointment uh, about some program or some opportunity. There is a disappointment that God is uh, saving you from. It was because of the wrong answer to a call from God. But the Lord says, the right, the opportunity is coming back around for you. And the, and the Lord says, when you respond right this time, there is a favor that's going to be released in your life. Now, in the name of Jesus, I command that Bathsheba image that's been burning in your mind and burning in your heart to be erased right now and I just see condemnation falling on you by the fire but it's coming off come on condemnation that darkness is coming off of your heart that guilt that shame that embarrassment is falling off of you come on let that go right now in the name of Jesus it's falling it's falling and it's melting like wax you will no longer stay up to two in the morning crying about your lack of guilt I see two nights ago the devil came and interrupted your sleep with great condemnation but God's fire breaks it off of you now fire In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. There is a breathing issue God is fixing with you as well. God's dealing with your uh, uh, your whole breathing pattern. In the middle of the night, you're going to start to experience God. Uh, that, that, that death spirit keeps trying to comfort you. I break it now in the name of Jesus. You will not go out of here the way. I see like a great grandmother. He tried to come after that. I break your power now in the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed, lady, from the top. What? Yes. Oh, yes. Right now. Complete healing over you. Complete healing over you. Complete healing over you. Complete healing over you. Completely. 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 Yes. Um, even, 
Yeah, I see uh, God's even doing, there's a multi-organ thing. That liver, I command it now in the name of Jesus. I command your entire body to regulate itself by the power of the Holy Ghost. Be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, give the Lord praise right now. Come on, take that by faith. Come on, give God glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
woman of God with the glasses, will you jump, please? Come on, this fire is moving right now. This fire is coming in the room. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God says to tell you that He's about to reward you immensely. For 12 years, you've been on a prayer assignment. And it has almost been as if you have felt as if God had ignored you from time to time. But there is a favor of you in the Spirit. And God has heard you and answered you. And the Lord shows me that the, a male seed, there's male uh, seeds being redeemed. And that God says great preachers come from you. And I'm going to allow your prayers to be answered right now. I heard a scream come out of hell. I saw that there was an interruption of a death attempt against you. That Satan had tried to diagnose you with a very aggressive sickness and Jesus Christ came and put his hand against your diagnosis and I see right now that the Lord is blocking the scalpel from your body in the name of Jesus be here right now I see the power of God like Anna the power of God fasting prayer fasting intercession and an anointing of to break over the male seed let it be so in your life in Jesus name come on give the Lord some glory come on give the Lord some glory Come on, give God some glory. Jesus, the prophet, is in the room. Jesus, the prophet, is in the room. He's unlocking destinies. He's opening up portals. He's releasing breakthrough. He's giving a refund on years. I will restore the years that the locust, the polar worm, the canker worm has stolen from you. Just worship him and his glory is in the room. His glory is in the room. I sense mantles of revelation descending. He wants to give you insight to your next set of instructions. The who, the what, the when, the where. There is a detail of the Spirit coming to you. There is a detail of the Spirit coming to you. He's positioning you for breakthrough by speaking to you concerning what you need to know. Father, as Elijah prayed for the servant, that his eyes would be open to see the flaming chariots that were in the mountain. I pray now that the eyes of this people is open. I come against the assignment of blackness and all spiritual cataracts, and I command your eyes open tonight in the name of Jesus. May they be open to us. May they be open towards destiny. May they be open towards purpose. May they be open towards prosperity. Let your eyes be open. I command your ears to be unstopped today. That you're hearing at a new realm and at a new degree. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, shout if you believe it. This, there's a man of God. Uh, you're all the way at the back. You have glasses towards the sound booth. Is this your wife next to you with the red? Would you, this one. Will the two of you please come? I bless you. 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 As you're sitting back there, I kept seeing an angel with a deed in his hand. <laughs> Father says what has turned into one of the most exhausting tedious processes of your life is about to turn and God says it's not going to turn because of anything other than your faithfulness to another man God says I've not forgotten how you served in the vision when it was not yours. And I've not forgotten Shia when you poured water on the hands of Elisha. I have not overlooked your faithfulness. And I have not forgotten the times where you stood in court to verify uh, that people needed another chance. Where you've been faithful, the Lord says, in that. And I see that there is coming a divine release of generational favor unto you, for you have been stressed. I see that in the year 2012, something came against your financial portfolio. There was a bank error that hit your portfolio and hit your 401k. Your retire it was shaken up when there were investments that went crazy and it affected your ability to move into sustained peace. But God says, watch and see if 
God will turn this thing for my good. Get ready, saith the Lord. I'm going to cause there to be computer error for your favor. And I shall move in uncommon ways. For I have not allowed your righteousness to go overlooked. I'm responding to you. And the Lord says there's a surprise. What you were going to pay for it, I'm going to cut the deal. It's going to be cheaper than what you had planned. For this is my doing, saith the Lord of hosts. Father, let your favor come upon your manservant. Let your favor come upon your manservant. And you, you, there's something right now. Everything that's going on on his pancreas, I curse you right now. You will not kill him and take him out of here. Your last doctor's appointment scared you. The fire comes upon your life. Right oh, wow. I wish you would give the eyes. I promise on that. Come on, fire upon his mouth. Hallelujah! He's a healing Jesus. He's a healing Jesus. He's a healing Jesus. Oh. Ah. Do you have a son? Do you have a son? Come here. I prophesy the word of the Lord to you for your son. The Spirit of God says, out of hell, there comes a massive conspiracy to diagnose your child. God says, I'm going to prevent the powers of hell from labeling him, from accusing him, from making him feel like his uniqueness is demonic. And what I'm going to do is I'm about to do a miracle for you. God says, I... Uh, God says, I delivered the men in your family from, for years from rage. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set your son ablaze very early. And I'm going to set you up to do what you should not have been able to do. And I'm going to do it even now. Even when I hear there is a guilt in your life right now about not being able to provide how you want. Satan messes with you daily about not being able to make the type of money. But behold, there comes provision. Behold, there comes provision. Behold, there comes provision. And you know what the Lord says? He's about to erase the record. Glory to God. He's about to remove the record and the designation over your life that stopped you from moving forward. And he's doing it now in Jesus' name. Come on, believe God for that. Come on, believe God for that. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Do I know you? Come here. Have I ever seen you somewhere before? Okay, all right. Sorry. Listen, you just look very familiar. There's an assignment. God says, uh, this is the third time he's asked you about this. I see campuses. I see uh, uh, groups of men set ablaze by the power of God. And the Lord says, tell him he reminds me of my servant David. He allowed me to purify him from an aggressive onslaught of seduction. And he made it on the other side of it to tell the story. So the Lord says, son, I'm going to use you to spark a moral revolution. A revolution against the power of lust, the power of seduction. And the Lord says, I'm going to use you to bring me into holiness. Your message is going to be holiness as unto the Lord. You're about to move into encounters with God where you're going to see his priestliness. Ah, you're going to burn like the creatures in heaven with a message of holiness. Father, will you put that in him in the name of Jesus Christ? Will you ignite him with holiness and we just send out silence in the spirit that if anything ever comes to seduce his heart again, may it be burned by fire in the name of Jesus. Come on again. And the fear of failure, I break that off of your mind right now in the name of Jesus Christ that you're going to move in great grace and great power in the assignment God gave you. Come on, if you believe that, shout hallelujah.
Lord show, come closer, will you? The Lord showed me the number six. That there had been six consistent attacks at you. And it started November of last year. And it's becoming so overwhelming. November the 12th is when it started. And the Lord says to tell you it's been so consistent that it's almost overwhelmed you. It's uh, It's been multi-tiered. It broke out in your family. Then it started in your body. Then it broke out in your money. And then it came after your ministry. You wanted to walk away from an assignment because of overwhelming levels of disappointment with your hopes and people. But I heard God say today, He is healed. You. If there's going to be healing. As I sat, as I uh, preached, you had a series of thoughts, and I'm going to tell you that the first one is, Lord, is this what's wrong with me? The second one is, do I need to go on a fast about this? And the third one is, I wonder if this is why I did not get that promotion. Glory to God. God is about to make sure that He settles that injustice for you, and I see the gavel coming down in the courts of heaven. He will not allow you to be treated unfairly. Father, will you break this cycle off of her in the name of Jesus? Even those migraine headaches from last week, be gone now in Jesus' name and receive your healing. Come on. Hey, I see the spirit of grief on you. Something happened. You, you didn't grieve right. God is giving you the opportunity to grieve the right way. Let that happen in your life. Let that come on right now. You were too afraid. It was like a death. Something happened and you didn't cry. You had to hold yourself up for the family. But now is your time to grieve. Now is your time to grieve. Now is your time to grieve. Father, bring the fire of restoration, of reconciliation, and fire and hope in her life. In Jesus' name. Aye, 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 aye. Thank, you, Thank you, Jesus. Come on, there's something on that. Lift that sound right now. God's doing something right now. Just lift your hands and worship Him. Something on the music is prophesying to us right now. Come on, I want you to just, for a few seconds, I want you to just cry out to God for the level of information you need. Come on, begin to ask Him for the power of breakthrough right now. God's breaking yokes off of assignments. He's breaking yokes off of gifts. He's breaking yokes off of financial classes. There is a level of clarity. Come on, there it goes right now. Where's the drum? I feel the fire of God. I feel the fire of God. Come on, there it goes. Come on, the heavens are all.
warlock assigned to your life to disciple you into darkness. And it started to bear fruit in your heart and in your spirit. A priest of perversion was sent to you. And God's going to take those roots out of your heart forever. Get ready. The Lord says now that you're going to go on the journey with him, he's going to move you up. Yeah. And he's going to, I see a shift. Boxes packed. Get ready. He's about to give you clarity to move you to safety. In the name of Jesus, you're going to feel the fire of God hit your heart right now. It did that figure that came in your life that taught you wickedness in God's house and taught you wickedness and tried to bring you into it. I break it now by fire right now. In the name of the fire comes upon you right now. You leave. You promise breaking spirit. You seductive power. Come on, you see the discord. You tried to come right now. In the name of Jesus, I break his manhood. I find you now and I release grace. Glory. Come on. Your healing is coming through worship. Your healing is coming through worship. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Shout a shout of victory in this place. Most people 
people would not last through. And the Lord says he tested you sorely to see if you could handle the day that has come. Now get ready. The day that is before you is a day unlike any other day. For I'm mantling you, the Lord says, for controversy. I'm mantling you to be able to interpret the controversy of the day. And the Lord says there's seven anointings that you have lived through, but the new anointing is going to be the Issachar anointing. I'm about to, I'm about to mantle you for times and seasons. And not only times and seasons, but timings and temples, saith the Lord. And the Lord says, I'm about to allow every prayer you pray. You have lit your daughter unto me. And the Lord says, there is an opportunity coming out of heaven. It is of me. It is of me. The Lord says, you protect him, so you want to make sure this is God. But get ready. TV is her place. Yes, movies are her portion. What I'm about to do is shoot your daughter out. She will be known by the nation because her mother lit her to me. Father, we stand in agreement with your spokeswoman that everything that's been stolen from her, we decree the sevenfold release. When the thief is caught, he repays. Let there be a season of restitution, of redemption, of release into her way. We prophesy it. We prophesy it in Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a shout out over this room. Oh, you got better than that. Come on, give the Lord a shout. Are you married with this leather coat? Come here, I want you and your wife to come here. You're not a, you're not a pastor, right? Okay, put your hands up. God says, this is nice, and this, you know, this is really good, and you really enjoy the word, but you came for something different. There is a confirmation you're looking for deep in your heart about the next assignment. God says to tell you, I'm about to give you a level of responsibility that you're afraid of. God says, don't be afraid. There is a shepherd's heart that God's been growing in you. A, 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 a people that are in need of something fresh and something new. And the Lord says, he's been grooming you for several years. And showing you in different uh, circles of what to do and what not to do. And the day of your favor is before you. Now I see where God is about to do something where he's going to make you the exemption to the rule. I know absolutely nothing about your family name. But there is a, a pressure on you to uphold it. And God says to let you know I'm going to use you differently. And I don't want you to apologize for it. The late woman, the Lord says to you. Those scary cat days have come to an end. You have run and you have hid behind him for safety. And you said, I don't understand church people. This stuff just don't make sense. I think all of them are phony. How do you know who to trust? But I'm going to tell you what the Lord's going to do. He's going to highlight disciplers for you. And he's going to pour into you so that you can catch up to speed with the move of God that's happened to your life. There is a profound counseling anointing on you. You have the ability to hear and heal. But sometimes it overwhelms you because you carry people's burdens on with you. And that's why you guard yourself. But the Lord is about to teach you to empty yourself out and trust him. And you know what I see? Sibling healing. God is about to heal something with you and some siblings. I see strife. And God is about to heal this family issue and this family unit to prepare you for the season that is to come. Get ready. The Lord is about to grace you. I see the gifts of the Spirit even opening up in you. Tremendous healing anointings are going to wake up in you. There is a model that God's been burning in your heart and I see a team forming around you. Go and do everything that is in your heart for the Lord is with you. Father, I bless this couple and I separate them for the assignment of this season. In Jesus' name, come on, give God praise right now. Hallelujah. We're going to sow. And we're going to sow an offering. Do you live in Chicago? You? Have I seen you before in my church? Never? Come here. I don't know what this thing is, but me feeling like I know people. It's the weirdest thing. Thank you, Father. Just lift your hands really quickly. Glory to the Son of God. Is your mommy? Come here. Lift your hands. 
<laughs> you know, I don't know. Typically, when people refer to Jezebel, they, they refer to women. But I see you are under attack by a male Jezebel. Yeah. A very vocally abusive, mentally manipulative Jezebel spirit that tried to bring you to nothing. This has happened two other times in your life when that same spirit spoke through a nail to crush you. This spiritual abuse, uh, it's, it's, it's long standing. You, you're under women that suffer a lot. But today God is healing you from the threats of Jezebel. You have been like, you have been in caves running from the threats of Jezebel. God's going to restore your life completely. You see and you see very well. But Jezebel had you feeling like you were out of your mind. And that you would never speak the word of the Lord again. But I tell you, yeah. like an arrow that's pulled back, you're about to be shot out. Glory to God, Father. Heal this mother. Put your word in her mouth. Give her great grace and great glory in Jesus' name. Now you know what I see for you? I see tremendous entrepreneurialism getting ready to form in you. God's about to use that cunningness that used to get you in trouble. And now what it's going to do is connect you even in the spirit. When you decided to turn to the Lord, you almost prematurely wanted to go back and get your boys and it wasn't time. The Lord says there will be a year span. God's going to put his fire in you. And I'm going to send you to those who knew the old you. And I'm going to mantle you with a, a powerful. I'm going to tell you what I see. There's a very strong evangelistic anointing on you. A very profound, piercing, bottom line anointing. You preach very often whether you know it or not. It's just persuasive. Even the recent political debate you just had. God said that that, that convincing thing comes out of you. But I'm going to tell you what I see. About two years ago, you were driving in a car. And something jumped in another driver. And you were supposed to die. You were supposed to leave here via a bad car accident. And the Lord would not let it be so because of the prayers of this woman. It was about 3 o'clock in the morning to be very clear. And you didn't know how quickly you missed it on an expressway. God says for the rest of now, be even more specific. In the sixth month of your mother's pregnancy, that same death came for you. That spirit of death has been trying to come for you all your life. And it's not been able to exceed. Because it's a part of your assignment is to break the powers of death. God is mantling you right now as a life giver. Father, oh, I feel that so strong. When you finally figure out who you are, it's going to be dangerous. Father, burn him with revival. Burn him with fire. Set his heart ablaze in the name of Jesus. And even that woman is being unfair to him. I pray that you would settle that case right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Set a new legacy and a new lineage with him by the power of the Holy Ghost. Final thing the Lord says is that that, that job door that closed in your face, I'm about to, the one who they gave it to is not going to last. I'm about to reopen it up and they're going to call you back. I decree that over you in Jesus' name. Come on, give God some praise all over this room. Hallelujah! Come on, give God a shout of praise!